Hey guys, welcome to another episode of LJ's Garage and behind me is a 2017 Nissan 370Z Nismo. So stay tuned, we're gonna find out if Nissan's philosophy of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, still holds true and this Nissan 370Z has still got it. As far as looks go, this hasn't changed much since 2008, 9, but I think this is one of the best looking Z cars and it's like a baby Nissan GTR to me. I love the boomerang headlights, the boomerang taillights, the black on this looks good. You can get this in the red, but the red's a little too show-offy for me and boy racer, so I love the mean look of the black. If you're wondering what the difference is between a base Model Z and this Nismo is, I'll answer that for you. So you get upgraded wheels, upgraded suspension, upgraded brakes, and this sick body kit that makes it look like a baby GTR. And look how large these brakes are. Those are some good sized brakes. Honestly, I could talk about the exterior of the Z all day. It's one of the best looking Japanese cars ever made to me. And really, it reminds me kind of the, like the new Supra. That's my current favorite, but this is a very close second. It's just so pretty. Like, I just love these Zs. They're just, so, so nice. This is one of those coupes that is actually a coupe, so you don't really get a whole lot of storage and space. So popping this trunk, you kind of can see it's not the best for anything. You can fit groceries in here, but really you're not gonna be taking this on long vacations or anything like that and putting a lot of luggage. It's just enough to get the job done, just enough to be considered practical. Another thing I wanna point out is it's really cool. Nissan has a lock button back here, so you can actually lock all the doors and everything from here just with the push of a button. So it's Good thinking. Under the hood, let's talk about a few things. You get a 3.7 liter V6 that makes 350 horsepower, which is up from the 332 base 370Z, 276 foot-pounds of torque, and zero to 16 about 4.7 seconds to 5.1 seconds. This VQ motor that Nissan's been using forever, you can actually find this in the Maximas, the Frontiers, there's different variations. This was even in the original 350Z. So it's tried and true, it works, it's pretty bulletproof, and that with a twin turbo setup and all that, this actually can handle quite a bit of power. As far as features goes, this one's a 2017. It's got navigation, Bluetooth, all of that good stuff. It's even got a backup camera, garage door opener. And fun fact for you guys is back in 2015, that was the first year that you were actually able to get an automatic transmission. You know, hate it or love it, it is what it is. I, I like it because it gives people the options to get into these cars without being stuck with a manual transmission because it's just kind of what it is. The one thing that I've got to say about these seats is if you are any wider than I am, it becomes a little bit of a problem because these are uh, pretty snug, so be ready for that. Since there isn't a whole lot of storage space for luggage and whatnot, Nissan does the favor of giving you little cubby holes back here. There's some little mini shelves and there's plenty of little compartments all over this to make sure that you have enough spots to put whatever knickknacks and doodads that you guys may carry in your seat. And of course, I'm a big audio person and the Bose sound system in this is beautiful. It sounds magnificent and there is a subwoofer in the rear. And let me just tell you, it sounds good. Check this out. On the interior, I love the Z badges all over the place. There's Nismo badging, the red and black accents. And then look at these seats. These are the coolest, coolest seats in a Z that I've seen. I love this steering wheel. It's got some little Alcantara wrapped on there and it's nice and thin, which is weird because you expect sport wheels to be thick and bolstered, but this one's actually nice and comfortable and very thin. One thing I gotta say for you future Z owners is that this car sits pretty low. If you're not used to that, you kinda have to do a little old man scoot out. Sometimes you gotta crawl on the ground a little bit and get out, but it's really not too bad. It's enjoyable sometimes. Best thing about a Z is that you remember that these cars were made to be driven. So. Who cares about the fancy technology, all of that good stuff. This has stiff suspension, really tight steering. You can put this car exactly where you want. And that's what I love about these Zs, and this one's no different. This one is an automatic, but that's okay because it's got the paddle shifters, and it shifts like butter. I really have no problems with this automatic. Yes, I'd prefer one in a manual, but to each his own, and this does a great job using the automatic transmission that it has. Yes, the American cars have more muscle and more power and more torque and this, that, and the other, but at the end of the day, does that really matter? Yes, this is a pricey car, brand new, but on the used car market, these are great values. Um, yes, a C5 Corvette like I had, I love that, but I enjoy this a lot, and I actually think that we get away from sports cars. There's the Corvettes and stuff like that that are actually made to handle and this is exactly that. It's made to handle 350 horsepower. It feels good and it's a track car. It's not for the quarter mile. That's not what this is set up for. So people just have to remember that. 
I know that the interior isn't very modern by today's standards. There, it's missing quite a lot of bells and whistles and features and stuff like that. But those are just distractions when you're driving a car like this. And I've been a fan of the Z since I was a little kid. And it's my pleasure to be in a car that only worries about the road. It's very refined, very sporty. It's just a nice car. And I've driven these with the manual transmissions and the best thing about them is the rev matching. It sounds like it's cheating for those of you that are like, oh, I drive a manual, I gotta do all the work. But rev matching is actually a pretty cool thing because not a lot of people know how to heel toe and do all of that. So the car does it for you. It'll actually blip the throttle and hold the throttle and do all of those things. So you can impress the ladies. You can look good when you shift. You won't find any sport buttons or comfort settings or anything like that for this suspension. It's just sport all the time. It's a Nismo, what else would you want? One of the common things I always hear when people talk about the 370Z is just how the interior is starting to age. And yes, it's a 2017, or if you get any of the 2018s, 19s, whatnot, this car does look the same as it did back then. But is that a bad thing? It's just a simple interior, that's all it is. It's not trying to be a luxury car and give you that feel. So to each his own, I think it looks okay, it gets the job done. This is not what this car is about. I also owned a WRX, and not to piss off you Subaru guys, but Subaru's interiors are garbage to me. So how can you guys judge that this interior is aged? It's nice, it's not luxury by any means, but so is a Subaru's, it's not really that great either. And yes, I know there's some of you that are arguing that 350 horsepower in 2019 means nothing, but it does a lot with that power. It feels good, it feels healthy, and it does throw you in the back of your seat, and it makes a beautiful sound doing it. And I've actually had a lot of fun in the little time that I've had with this Z. So for those of you that are saying that 350 horsepower is not all that, it's a solid amount. It's a good daily driver, you know, horsepower rating for a car. I've done a lot of reviews and I've driven a lot of cars. And I've got to say, this one just puts a smile on my face. Like I just love flooring it and just being able to use all of this horsepower. And that's the thing with it. It's usable horsepower and it's safe, it's fun. Like you just can control this car without feeling like you're gonna die. So if you want a car that's gonna scare the life out of you, then I guess this maybe isn't the car for you but you can actually put these cars through their paces and take them to the track and feel good. Like you actually are a decent driver. So the best part about this Nismo is taking corners. It's just so confident and it's just so thrilling and you feel connected to the road. A lot of these cars nowadays, they've got the electronic steering, this, that, and the other. You don't get to feel that connection with the road like you do in a Z. This is the best street car that I think I've ever had the pleasure of driving other than like a Miata. And I know I sound like one of those Miata guys, but when you actually corner and steer this thing, it does exactly what you tell it to do. And you just feel good. I'm pretty sure you guys know what's gonna happen next. So let's just do this. If all my thoughts leave you confused as to how I feel about the Z, do I love it, do I hate it? I will tell you this, brand new, I probably would start shopping elsewhere, but on the used car market, I would buy one of these Z's in a heartbeat. And I actually, after driving this, I want one of these in my collection of cars. Thank you guys for checking out another episode of LJ's Garage. Be sure to hit that comment button and let me know what you think of the 370Z and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all the support I can get. 